Media Network. This time check is brought to you by Massey Stores Home, your way to a beautiful home in the Gablewood Shopping Mall. Good night, St. Lucia, and welcome to another episode of Police Insight. I am your host, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. I'd like to say good night to our police commissioner, Mr. Milton Daisy. Our deputies, good night to you, Mr. Brian, Mr. Shalry. How are you guys doing? Our assistant commissioners of police, Ms. Pelius, good night to you. I know you are tuned in. How are you doing? Ms. Um, Dr. Mashama Sili. Mr. Nicholas, gazetted officers, inspectors, sergeants, corporals, constables, both junior and senior, good night to you, special police constables, special reserve officers, city police, good night to you, former police officers, how are you guys doing? I hope retirement is excellent. Yeah, good night to you all. Um, our brothers and sisters in law enforcement, from the Bodley Correctional Facility, Customs, Port Police, uh, Fire Department, I'd like to say good night to you all. Security officers um, around the island, doing what you guys do. Stay safe. Good night to you. Um, so we're live right now on Choice Television. This is the place to be. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in as we start another um, exciting and informative episode of Police Insight. I have an amazing guest in studio with me tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So you better stay tuned. We're going to be discussing, well, the name of the episode tonight is the rule of law. So you don't want to miss this one at all. Um, let me see. Let me see. We have a birthday shout out, Tevin. We have a birthday shout out. So let's get into that. Um, let's see. Happy birthday to Sergeant... Xavier, Sergeant Kalik Xavier of the Vivot Police Station. Happy birthday, my brother. Um, I'd like to wish you all the best. I hope you had a great day and um, many, many more years to come. Stay safe, my brother. Keep up the good work. Um, so I, I, I want some of that cake, my brother. You, you better send a piece of that cake for me. I know you got it. I know you got it. So once again, happy birthday to Sergeant Xavier. As you know, we all need King Kakao. Have a good night, my brother. Yes, um, Tecla Previl. Tecla Previl, good night to you. Pearl Mac Lawrence and Corporal Michael Monlui. I'd like to say good night to you. So, folks, let me just check out who's already signed in. Amanda Charles, good night to you, my cousin. How are you doing? Uh, Victor C. Anthony from Brooklyn, New York. How are you doing, my brother? Kelvin Knight and Diane Silly. Yes, we're streaming live on the Choice TV, um, Choice Network platform, so you could tune in on Facebook. So let's now get into the New York Laws for this week's episode. All right, so the New York Laws... Um, we're looking at Section 119 of the Criminal Code of St. Lucia, 2013, and it's entitled Report of Suspected Cases of Abuse. And this says here that subsection 1, a person who is in position of trust or authority towards a young person who in the course of his or her duty becomes aware of any act of abuse committed against that young person shall, as soon as is practicable, make a written report of the case to any police officer or to the government department responsible for social services. Subsection 2, a person mentioned in subsection 1 who without reasonable cause fails or refuses to make such a report to a police officer commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of $1,000. Subsection 4, in this section, 
abuse means an unlawful sexual intercourse or connection with a young person in terms of subpart C, sexual offenses, and that's still the same code, okay, the criminal code, or unlawful use of force on a young person. And subsection 5, in this section, person who is in a pos position of trust or authority includes, and that's important, ladies and gentlemen, okay, so it's now describing who we're talking about, who we're referring to when the, sec the citation of law says, position of trust or authority, and that includes a parent, guardian, teacher, medical practitioner, social worker, drivers of school buses, or any other person having charge of a young person. And, and, and I dare say, um, viewers and listeners, that would mean anyone or everybody, okay? If you are aware that there is some, something going on, whether it's a particular family, whatever the case may be, where a young person may be being abused or is in danger, it's your duty to report it, okay? And, and notice the section says if a suspected case. So even if you believe that whatever information you have might not worth the grain of salt or anything, or you believe it might be a waste of the police time, don't ever think that way. Any information you have where a minor or juvenile might be in some danger or in trouble or being abused, it's your duty to report it. And if we have evidence, if we have evidence, credible evidence or information that you are in a position to have reported that matter and you didn't, then we can bring you before the courts and you'll be liable to a fine of $1,000. And I know some of you might be saying, oh, $1,000, Sergeant Hippolyte. Uh, some people don't have that right now, okay? So you got to do what you got to do. So let's get into it. Um, Emma James, Dadia, what's that? Dadia Aurelis? Yeah, Dadia, or the Dyer Aurelis. You know, you, my, my, my viewers, some of you, if you those those names, man. Yo, you guys give me some trouble with those pronunciations. Barbara Labadibur, good night to you. So without further ado, people, I'm now going to introduce my, my esteemed guest for the night. So here tonight with me is none other than Dr. Edwin Witt Powell. And it's only tonight I'm knowing that his middle name is Witt. I didn't know that before. Dr. Edwin Witt Powell, and he's a human rights and national security expert. I'd like to say good night to you. So welcome to Police Insight. Thank you, Sarge. Thank you. How are you doing? How, how was the day? I'm doing well, man. It's been a long day, but I'm doing well. Excellent. I, um, I can't wait to get into the interview with you because I know it's going to be very informative, especially for our viewers and listeners out there. So if you haven't, this is where you tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in. So, Dr. Powell, could you tell St. Lucia and those out there in Facebook and TV land across the diaspora a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I'm, I'm Edwin Powell. I've, I've been to St. Lucia a number of, number of times. I've been uh, tasked with providing human rights training to St. Lucia, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, for the last seven years. Been working, doing other training in and around uh, uh, trafficking, uh, financial crimes, and a host of other trainings. Excellent. I'm a uh, forensic psychologist by training. Uh, have been working with in that particular field for a number of years, uh, but uh, have been here for a while uh, doing similar work. Excellent. Yeah. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about your educational background? Okay. Uh, I have a a uh, bachelor's degree from Rutgers University in psychology, uh, four master's degrees, relevant master's degrees in uh, psychology, psychological testing, a doctoral degree in uh, educational psychology, as well as an honorary doctorate uh, from Essex College for the work that I've been doing for the last uh, two decades in human rights as well as education. Excellent. So you stated that you've been to St. Lucia a couple of times. 
So what brings you back to St. Lucia at this point in time, Dr. Powell? Well, I was, I was invited back uh, at the behest of, of the commissioner uh, who wanted me to come back and, and to actually institute uh, some more additional training. Uh, but also I'm coming back uh, to actually participate in the uh, rights of the fallen soldier, ah, yes. uh, uh, our, our comrade who, whose life was uh, just taken. Uh, just, uh, so I'm just here to support not only him, uh, his family, uh, the, the Royal um, St. Lucia Police Force, uh, and his girlfriend, and uh, not only uh, that, but his partner, his partner who was also injured uh, during that act. And uh, so, so it's, I'm here. I'm here to uh, provide a number of services, much of which I, what I, I can't really get into tonight, yes. but yes. We'll speaking generally in terms of uh, the fact that I'm here, that, that the, the commissioner uh, is serious about uh, really uh, ridding the communities of crime to really um, bring back that, that sense of security for, for citizens um, that, that, that they deserve, and most importantly, um, to put uh, St. Lucia on the map as being a safe destination for all tourists. Excellent. Um, and at this point, I'd like to say good night to Officer Calvin, my brother. Um, I know you're recovering nicely. Um, so if you tune in, I'd say good night to you, my brother. Um, this episode is, is, is entitled The Rule of Law. Could you briefly explain to our viewers the political philosophy of rule of law? Well, rule of law, uh, Zach, is, is basically... A, a, a component of the social theory as a social contract. And when we had our human rights course, we talked about um, Jacques, uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. We yes. talked about, uh, you know, John Locke. We talked about uh, Thomas Hobbes. And we talked about how this, this particular political theory in and of itself is a contract between the governed and the persons governing. And in, in, in a sense, it's in a way in which the people who are being governed are actually contracting with those who are governed to actually give up some rights in order, for in order to secure protection. Right. And of course, it's a give and take, a give and take exchange. And uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's important, especially in, in, in most civil societies, that, that we have uh, morals, and values, and, and rules, and so forth and so on, by which individuals have to live. But we've seen across the world, not only here in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. but we're seeing across the world that these, this contract is being breached. It's being breached by criminals. It's by being breached in, in, at, the, at, the, at the most basic institutions. And can you imagine, the most basic institution is the family. Yeah. And when you have individuals in the family who break that social contract, you have a family in chaos. And it's no different when you have individuals in society who break the social contract you have chaos. That's right. And so rule of law in and of itself is something that, 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 that's a ruling guide. But that was memorialized by Western philosophers as African people. Mm -hmm. This was communal philosophy that back in, during Timbuktu, when, when, when the universities were, were, were thriving back, back in those days, we didn't have, it, have to memorialize this in writing. We didn't have to have constitutions and so forth. This we lived it. Lived this so it's lived. We lived it, but through through being enslaved people and losing our culture, we're now seeing ourselves uh, caught up between a rock and a hard place, and, and 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 losing some of those values that we innately and inherently had within us. Just we were built. This was the, these that's were, amazing. So the, these are these are the things that 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 in in in, in a sense that really speaks to the importance. Of, of social theory, in fact, that we're now turning our backs on. Excellent. We are going to well, reduce our very first break. And you know most times, you know, when we have an amazing show, the times fly. But I'd like um, Father Time to slow down on time for tonight. So let's take our first break. Stay tuned to Police Insight. <laughs> This is Andre and Jenny Joseph, a typical hardworking St. Lucian couple. And this is their daughter, Anna. Here they are in the new car they've always dreamed of. 
Here they are in the house, furnished on higher purchase. Unfortunately, this is Andre the day he was laid off, and this is his wife one month later. This led to the financial problems and a lot of credit card debt. This is Andre and Jenny at Monroe Credit Union getting all the outstanding debts consolidated. This is Andre back at work. This is Jenny stronger and better than ever. With the Monopole Credit Union on their side, they can get through whatever life throws their way. Monopole Cooperative Credit Union. Our people, our community, our credit union. The Civil Status Registry is making it easier to access the services of the Civil Status Registry using the DigiGov platform. I need my birth certificate to get my national ID. Applying for it online sounds great to me, instead of standing on a line. Recently my mom passed away and I need to apply for a death certificate. I live and work in the South and I would love to apply from the comfort of my home. You have access to the services of the registry from anywhere, the comfort of your home or office, using a laptop or mobile device. We're taking you off the line and making it easier online. Register with DigiGov today. If you need help accessing DigiGov e-services, visit the Civil Status Registry or any one of the ICT centers in Miku, Moshi, Sufre, Yefor, and Ansloray. DigiGov, serving people and businesses with that island love. Coming February 24th, 2022. protects and cleans like Supreme. Supreme Bleach, available at leading supermarkets island-wide. Agents in St. Lucia, Rennick and Company, shopping the world for you. Welcome back to Police Insight. I'm your host, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte of the Royal Sinusha Police Force. In studio with me is human rights and national security expert, Dr. Edwin Witt Powell. As we continue um, our conversation, um, where the episode is entitled The Rule of Law. Um, just before I ask my next, my next question, I'd like to say good night to um, Colin, Colindia. Kalindia, I hope I got that correct. Kalindia, good night to you. And Miss Remy of Victoria Shosel, who's also tuned in. I'd like to say good night to you. So let's continue with our engaging conversation with Dr. Powell at this moment in time. Um, doctor, if that's okay, go ahead, doctor. I'm sure that you've heard about the uptick in violence recently. Um, on the island and you know usually when this happens there's lots of conversation on social media and different platform talk shows and um, there are lots of blame game going here and there as to the reason as to why the, the, the violence has escalated would you agree or there's some thinking that the pandemic should be blamed that that, that that's a skip should it be a scapegoat the pandemic for what's happening right now in solution around the world. We have to, we have to put that into perspective. You know, um, I, I beg to differ, disagree that, uh, that it, in fact, it is the entire reason why we have an uptick in crime. Now, most people in, in, in the, especially uh, mental health, would say that perhaps this pandemic may cause internalizing behavioral disorders such as anxiety, mm -hmm. depression. And you could, you could argue that that may be the case. But for externalizing behavior disorders such as violence, I think that's, that's a poor excuse um, for, uh, uh, to, to actually accuse uh, a pandemic uh, for um, heinous crimes that are being committed around the world, not only here in St. Lucia, but across the world in Chicago, Illinois, Baltimore, Maryland, 
you know, so, but I, I don't think that that's the case. I do believe that it may have some impact on individuals, uh, but to say that it, it's the entire reason why we have the crime, I don't believe that. I don't buy that. I think that this pandemic has done something uh, that this generation has not seen. It has actually forced people to be more communal, mm -hmm. to stay home. Mm -hmm. And it, if anything, I think it has improved uh, social interaction amongst families because prior to the pandemic, people were ha people had their faces in their phones, you know. So I would say that if this was perhaps late 18th century or perhaps early 19th century, with not having the technology that we have, perhaps I would say that this could be a contributing factor. But n no, I don't. But, I, I don't buy that. But but um, Dr. Powell, some would say that um, the, the the extended um, activity of staying home have, have caused some issues. I, I remember hearing a, a report out of St. Lucia, I think, from the social services that as a result of some of the curfews and lockdowns, um, domestic violence had, um, um, had risen in terms of occurrence. Well, what, I, what would you say to that? I, I, I would say that I, 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 I don't think that if, if, if the pandemic didn't exist, one couldn't argue that the, that, that the yeah. domestic violence didn't exist. True. Now, I think that, in fact, um, being, bringing two spouses in close proximity for longer periods of time may have increased the uptake of it, perhaps, yes. Mm -hmm. And same thing with, with uh, uh, child abuse. But mm -hmm. those, those types of abuses existed even before the pandemic existed. So uh, I, I just think that perhaps, you know, um, it, it, to say it's the cause of it, no. I, 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 can't, I can't say that I would support that. Um, but, but definitely, I think across, I think we have to acknowledge the fact that if you have a child who's being abused and that child is in close proximity to an abuser, um, the child is, don't have respite and away from home and perhaps at school for, for periods of time, and of course, yes, that creates an opportunity for um, incidences, more incidences to occur. Uh, but to say that that is the sole reason why people are committing violence, why people are abusers, I, I can't I can't support that at all. Uh, Dr. Powell, what um, in your opinion, in your experience, your education, what are some of the factors um, that would cause or influence a human being to commit crime or, or violent crime, uh, or, or is it that people just have a choice they choose? It's multifaceted, and if I had the answer, I'd bottle it and sell it. <laughs> okay. But I will say, I think it starts. It starts in the first in the first institution, the family. You know, uh, individuals and families, uh, especially young people, require character building, and we have a missed opportunity where we are not demanding character building in our schools. Children need to develop character. If you train a child while they're young, the Bible says when they grow up, they won't depart from those ways. Yeah. And character building is a way in which it's a missed opportunity for, for schools to be able to um, uh, bring character building educational programs. You can get tapes, videotapes, and, and all types of other programs that you can indoctrinate children with, with positive messages at school, you know, um, so that once they're out in the communities, they can actually know what's right and know what's wrong. But I also have to say that there's an economic component too. Mm. Poverty, poverty around the world. If you, if you find, the most, if you find mm. the most impoverished community, you'll find the most crime. Why that's is that? facts. That's, those are facts. And most people would argue, well, well I think you're being uh, you know, yeah. discriminatory by saying that. Yeah, because you're going to say people who are rich commit crimes. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they do <laughs> commit crimes, yeah. and, and by far, they, they, they're the ones who are committing most, most of the time white collar crimes. Oh they're not, they, we're talking about violent crimes. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about crimes that are actually crime against humanity, crime, crimes against individuals. And so, um, you know, you're going to find the poorest schools. You're going to find the poorest performance schools. You're going to find the, the worst uh, recreational centers. And you're going to find crime, especially when, there's po when there are pockets of poverty. So there's an economic component to this as well. The breakdown of the family, um, the lack of resources in the communities, um, the, the lack of, of adequate economic opportunities for individuals. You have young people who do walk the streets, and I know that there's in, in instances where individuals are walking the streets looking for gainful employment, but because of those, those opportunities don't exist, they have to actually 
um, rely on other means. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's and, 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 and that's, we, could, we could get into a whole litany of, 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 of reasons sense. why crime exists, mm -hmm. why people do what they do. But what I say to people is, you know, uh, we have to have better impulse control. We know better. We know when, we, when it's wrong to injure another person. We know it's wrong to pull a knife out and stab another person, to shoot another person. We know that's wrong. Even when we're hungry. We know our, that's wrong. We know that's wrong. Mm -hmm. A life is much, yeah. more, much more worthy uh, than, than a belly full of food. So I, I, I would say that, you know, poor impulse control and poor inhibition skills in and of itself, I think, and mental health too. We uh, have to account for that as well. Doctor, there's this... Um there's this thinking that parents have lost their way when it comes to parenting. And, and, and that um, in this age of technology, it's almost as if like parents are allowing technology to be the ones to socialize the children and raise the children. So I'll give you an example. Um, you would see uh, in St. Lucia, and, and my viewers, you know what I'm talking about, um, after work, mom and dad comes home, child comes home. Most times you'd find that everyone go directly to their devices. Do you think that's an issue? Uh, this is a problem that um, parents need to come back or, or we need to be retaught how to raise our kids and, 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 and understand that maybe technology could be a, a, a very dangerous um, factor when it comes to the proper indoctrination of children in terms of how they should be, behave. I think that's a given. That is definitely a given. I think uh, technology has uh, divided family. It has placed family, I think, in a precarious situation. Uh, family members, uh, especially mothers, single mothers, depend on the television, depend on the electronic devices to actually babysit the child while they're doing things that they need to do. So I, I, I think that there's, that there's an argument there, but that's also um, a, a, a way for parents to uh, do what they have to do. You have a, let's take for example, mm -hmm. a single mother who has to raise a child um, single-handedly and uh, have to cook, wash clothes, do all the other activities or other daily living skills that the child requires. And at the same time, the child needs to, to, to do homework, help the child with homework. Hmm. So, yeah, so, so technology has, has its, its pluses and it has its minuses. Technology, you can use, the, for example, the Internet. You can use uh, social media. Social media has its, 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 its pros and its cons. You can get training off social media. You can get some of the best information, albeit there's some false information out there as well. But, also, but, but social media can also, uh, you know, uh, be a con. So I, I think that there's an argument that we can make that technology does play a role in, 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 in the breakup of the family, but it's incumbent upon uh, us to really realize that it, it's not a, a surrogate. It's, it's something that's it's a, it's a, in addition to but it's something we need to go back to the basic social contract that I talked about. Okay. It's parents sitting down at the table, having dinner with their children at night, um, having conversations with the devices put away, um, having outings, walks, basic conversations without having the devices. And you have some individuals who re uh, actually interact with their parents through texting. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's, uh, and, but that's, we have a generation who was, we can't blame it on them, um, Sergeant, either, because this is a technology generation. Yes, yes. You know, in and, and, and this millennium, the next millennium, will look a little different than this. They'll be looking back at this millennium saying that this millennium was better than, <laughs> better than the one that they're living in. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, it's, it, you'll probably see that much, that much less um, interaction. But, um, in fact, uh, I think uh, we... Technology has been, the genie has been let out of the bottle, and it's something you cannot suppress. But what we as parents need to do is to go back to our old-fashioned ways and to ensure that we have that, that basic, that one-to-one -one social interaction that means so much, that intimate connection between us and children that makes the dynamics of the family. Excellent. Let me just um, 
see some reaction on the Facebook chat there. I'd like to say good night to Dr. Venus Rastaman Cherry. How are you doing? Um, Johnny Joseph, good night to you. Um, someone says there, I'm curious about the guest thoughts on how we address the issue of not knowing rights, not trusting those in charge to protect those rights, and the perception that our institutions and transparent or accountable. Would you like to get, take that on now, Doc, or you could do that a little later? Well, I, I, I'd say as, as informed citizens uh, and as individuals who want more knowledge is sitting down and having an audience with elected officials. And one thing I will tell you is that, is that if elected officials uh, don't want to sit down with you, officials will respond to crowds, <laughs> individuals, voters who come together in, 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 in groups who have concerns. And, and that's how you gain audience with elected officials. And they respect that. When you bring a pact and you have a concern that you want to air out with elected officials, and I think a coming individually is fine, but when you get a group of individuals to, to come together who shares your, your same concerns, come together, form that organization, that network, and, and, and challenge your, your, your elected officials to answer some of those very questions that you're posing here tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, viewers, um, I like the, the interaction that's going on in the Facebook chat. We're due for another break. Stay tuned to Police Insight. The Royal St. Lucia Police and Allied Services Credit Union Limited continues to innovate and remains focused on member satisfaction in this COVID-19 era. For these reasons, we stand proud to give our members an unprecedented opportunity to own a piece of St. Lucia and to create a secured future through our investment services. Now available at the Police Credit Union, 100% financing on residential land loans. Additionally, we offer a unique investment opportunity in our fixed deposit investment plan. Earn as much as 5% annually on your investment. And if you are looking for a golden opportunity for a supplemental savings plan for retirement or any other reason, you can now enroll in our Golden Harvest Investment Plan. The Royal St. Lucia Police and Allied Services Credit Union has remained committed to serving you in this COVID period and will continue to serve you in good times and in bad times. the grand prize of $50,000 in the Digicel Prime Plus 50K jackpot. Or you can grab second place prize of $15,000 or third place prize of $5,000 and loads of weekly prizes like cash, airline tickets, staycations, shopping sprees, and so much more. To enter, simply activate any Digicel Prime Plus bundle in the My Digicel app or dial star 140 number sign. One day Prime Plus bundle equals one raffle entry. Three day Prime Plus bundle equals three day raffle entry. Seven day Prime Plus bundle Bundle equals seven raffle entries. And a 30-day Prime Plus bundle equals 30 raffle entries, plus a bonus of 20 extra entries. Over $100,000 in prizes to be won. Activate the Prime Plus bundle today. Digicel, better together. Welcome back to Police Insight. Your host there, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyt, in studio with me, Dr. Edwin Witt Powell, human rights and national security expert, as we continue 
this very informative and engaging interview. Before I ask my next question, um, a viewer posted um, this message, and I, I, we just love it. So I'm going to read it, okay? And that's coming from Kelvin Foswa. So Kelvin Foswa says, TV destroyed community, cell phone destroyed family, and materialism destroyed the individual. Everybody turned to robot, and robots cannot love. I, we love that. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kelvin, for that uh, posting on the Facebook chat. Keep it coming, guys. So, um, Dr. Powell, information reaching me is that you have spoken to the families of um, our colleagues who were recently ambushed, um, resulting in um, the passing, the tragic death of Police Constable Timet. Can you tell us how are they doing? And um, as a therapist, what is your assessment of their grief and pain? Well, I think overall, I think that all of the loved ones um, from the deceased, uh, our deceased comrade, are devastated. Um, I think uh, that it's grief is something that uh, differs amongst every individual. It mm -hmm. could take uh, years, months um, to to get over this. Uh, depends on the individual, but I know that it's it's uh, it's a difficult situation for the family. Um, I, I'm there to support them um, and to provide any support that I can uh, to to both families. Uh, but I do know, I, and, and one thing that struck me with uh, uh, Officer Timit uh, is one of his colleagues described him as dealing with young people. That whenever mm -hmm. he went into a, a school classroom to deal with young people, he kneeled down right to their level so he could look him straight in the eyes oh, wow. to interact with them. And it spoke volumes. I'd never met the brother before, but that spoke volumes in terms of who he was that he met people on the level, on their level. And it, it just, it meant a lot to me just to hear uh, the life that he lived. And uh, he, he has a legacy here in, in St. Lucia. He's the, he's the nation's hero. Yes, yes, thank you. And um, also, um, Officer Calvin, my brother, we, we're so happy that you're recovering so nicely. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the death of um, our colleague, um, doctor, it has definitely impacted us, yes. okay? Um, what we'd like to know, how does the death of police officers um, affect the psyche of the police, the citizenry, and I dare say, the economy? Yes. The psyche is, is easy. It creates anxiety. It creates trauma. And not to mention... There's, a, there's a, a famous psychiatrist by the name of Van der Kolk, and he speaks of how traumas like this is constantly repeated, constantly repeated, especially when there's not psychological debriefing mm -hmm. to help the individual officers, especially involved in such a tragedy, get past that trauma. So it impacts the, the, the police officers. But what about the spouse, the children that you have to leave each day? especially when an officer is actually lost in the line of duty, other members of the same police force have that same type of anxiety as that person's family. Your wife, your mothers, your cousins, your sisters, your brothers are thinking that this could possibly happen to you. So they're suffering as well. But it, it Im impacts not only society, because the society believes that, uh, you know, if they're are police officers who are being gunned down in the streets. <laughs> it could be me. So it's a, yeah. it's, it's a sense of security, a lack of security that the, that the public feels. And, and not to mention, it, 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 it creates havoc with the economy. People, young people who are out there committing these crimes, I don't think that they realize that they're hurting their parents, their aunts, their uncles, their sisters and brothers who work in, in resorts and so forth. St. Lucia is a tourist nation. Much of its gross domestic product depends on tourism. And when that tourism goes down, jobs go away. Jobs are actually in jeopardy. And so you're not, not only hurting uh, 
the individuals, but you're hurting the economy, you're hurting the nation. You feel me? You're hurting the nation. It's time, it's high time for young people in particular. Mm -hmm. Because, and I say young people, because those are, when you look at crime, the crime statistics, most of the crimes are actually being perpetrated by young adults or younger people. And th th it, we have to get a grip on, on, on why we are committing crimes against each other. But, but how, how do we counter this? Is, is there a way to counter this? The fact that the data shows that young people are the ones committing those heinous offenses. Is there a way to counter this, doctor? Well, I, I, would, I would tell you this. Your commissioner is on this. Your commissioner is adamant that this crime it will stop under his administration. I've spent countless hours having conversations with him. Uh, and, and let me explain to mm -hmm. you my, 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 my meeting, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 Daisy. Daisy. Mm -hmm. I actually came to St. Lucia under Mr. Moncherie's administration, under his leadership. And Mr. Daisy was basically, at the, at the time, um, within the ranks. Yes. When I first, when I met with Mr. Daisy, he was adamant that I was apolitical, not having any type of uh, preference towards one party or the other because he simply told me that I'm a police officer. That's who I am. That's the, those are the colors that I wear. And I intend to make sure that the citizens of St. Lucia are safe, that to the extent possible that he could make change, bring change to this police force, that he grab each and every uh, officer uh, by the bootstrap and help them up to give them the resources and tools that they need to actually make this, 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 uh, this organization work. And I've seen his pain in the last couple of, couple of days. And, and he's, 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 he's suffering along with, with a lot of you all. Hmm. Uh, and and uh, he's, he's essentially baking, putting ingredients together to really bake a cake for the criminal elements here in this, in this country. And I won't get into how it's, how it's going to be done in, in, in operational um, information, but know that, that, that the commissioner is, 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 is really in tune to what's going on and, and really uh, uh, about making change, especially here in So Michigan. you're making that assurance to, to, to the public tonight because some, 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 some sections of society believe that nothing is being done. And, and, and I, can, I can understand that, mm -hmm. but Rome wasn't built in a day. And, 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 and policing is methodical. You just can't jump up and uh, perhaps right. uh, you know, run down the street and start pointing fingers at this person. It, 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 takes it takes time. It takes time to build, build cases, to present to, to, to prosecutors so that information can, 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 can flow through the courts, through the, through the judicial system properly, and you can get the convictions that you need. But I would just, in, just, just ask the public to just be patient, allow um, the commissioner, allow the police officers uh, to do what they do best and, and, and to continue to police. But uh, I, I do believe that uh, in, in due course and in due time, uh, the public, elected officials, uh, visitors, everyone will be at least, um, um, I, I believe, satisfied with how um, this, this police force is handling some of the most current issues. Um, Dr. Powell, you are a human rights expert. Um, well, I'll, I'll, well I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Um, in St. Lucia, the, the perception of the, 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 the the human rights lawyer, the human rights advocate, uh, I dare say that they don't really have um, public approval because in St. Lucia, um, the citizenry sees the human rights practitioner as one who's on the side of the criminal. To, to those listening tonight, and I've seen some, actually some, 
um, comments in, in the, the Facebook chat making reference to that, that the criminals have more rights than victims. Human rights um, practitioners only, only speak when, when the police may have probably shot a criminal, etc., etc. but no one really speaks for the victim. What, do you, what would you like to say to those individuals when it comes to human rights? You know, I, when I first came here to St. Lucia back in 2015, Miss Mary Francis was the first person that I visited with. And if she's watching, she can attest to that. The now prime minister was opposition leader at the time. I met with him first because I wanted to get the approval of everyone here on the island before I came in. But there was a misconception that human rights is somehow a way for criminals to uh, be better criminals. Mm -hmm. Human rights is simply rule of law. It is the contract between good, right, and wrong. Individuals who are uh, uh, committing crimes, they have human rights. Individuals who are walking down the street, uh, who are looking to better themselves educationally, they have human rights. Human rights are tools that are actually used to buttress society. It is not in, in any way, shape, form, or fashion used to somehow s just slap the wrist of criminals. And, uh, you know, we, we see on, I think television has, in a sense, kind mm -hmm. of, I think, blurred our vision in terms of what human rights is all about. We can't arrest an individual. An individual who has committed a heinous crime, mm -hmm. The first thing you do is you arrest this individual, and, and the first thing that people say is beat him up. That's not how we. That's that's not how civilized societies do it. We know that the crime that they committed is somehow heinous. Yes, lots of people hurting and hurting, mm -hmm. and we and that's a visceral response. And we're emotional human beings. We're we're we're, we're not we're not flawless. We're flawed, and so our emotion sometimes drives us to think. But that's the reason why. I wanted to teach that human rights course, that first human rights course, is to let police officers know that they stand, they stand on the shoulders of angels, stand on the shoulders of angels, and they have to, they have to, they have to conduct themselves in a way that the public can trust them and that, they, that, that the public can feel at least some sense of, of, of security. But if you see a police officer out there on the street who are just in, who's engaged in illegal activity, beating up people and, 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 and all sorts of stuff like that, then that's no sense of security. And that's no rule of law. There's no, there's no social contract. No social contract. And I hate to keep going back to this, mm -hmm. this Western political philosophy, but social contract is, is what we need in a society. That, that's, what makes, that's what makes us civilized. That's what makes the, the institution of family works. That's what makes... Um, the, the, the parliamentary procedures in parliament. That's what parliament, members of parliament have a, have a social contract with each other that they're going to con conduct themselves in a, in a, in a, in a fashion that would, would, would represent the people that they represent, that is representative of the people that they represent. Not going into parliament and having a fight, a physical fight. <laughs> True. You know, and so th that's the social contract. It's, it's, it's the rule of law that's, 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 that's oftentimes have been manifested into constitutions, policies, and the, and the likes. But human rights is a protector of, of, of values, morals, and norms. And, and so I don't want anyone to think that um, somehow that human rights is somehow mm -hmm. uh, out there to aid criminals. It, it doesn't. It aids everyone. Human, everyone have human rights. Who, who do you think... Um it bears more the responsibility uh, in terms of their shoulders of speaking out for, on behalf of victims. Uh, repeat that. I, 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 okay, so let me put it more into context in terms of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. the, the perception is that, well, we, we, we have uh, uh, human rights practitioners who are very outspoken, right. especially when it comes to um, the, the possibility of... Uh, criminal, whoever it is, their rights being infringed upon by the state, by the police. What citizens are saying is that they, they don't hear anybody really speak up for the victims of crime. Right. 
Yeah, and, and there's, there, there are organizations around the world, and I think we have one here in St. Lucia too. We have a, a victim's advocacy, advocacy program here. And, and mm -hmm. look, uh, the law in and of itself, the wheels of justice are the ones that advocate on behalf of the victim to make sure that the, that the, that the perpetrator has been locked up and that the victim is in a safe space at least I hope that's, that, that's, what happen, that's what's happening around the world. Um, but at the same time, the, the prisoner who has been, or, or the, the, the assailant or the suspect, mm -hmm. has to have due process. Has to have due process. They have to have due process. Because everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Un, un, until proven guilty. And so during that, during that, that, that course of, 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 being, uh, of being innocent until proven guilty, we have to make sure that if they're being held by police officers, that they're, uh, they're being housed properly, that they're um, in, in at least decent facilities, uh, and, and, that, that, and that we're not, bar we're not acting mm -hmm. barbaric. Mm -hmm. But, and be tried. And after that, and after the sentence has been in, handed down to them, then that's when they serve their time, their hard time. But during, during that, that, that intermission or that period in which they're being tried, we have to show, we have to show some sense of, of humanity by, 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 by uh, at least uh, showing the world, showing the world um, who we are as, a, as, a, as model citizens. And, 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 and it's, it's how we treat the least amongst us, whether it's a criminal or uh, someone who is homeless. Person. homeless it's how we. That's 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 how we're gonna be. We're gonna be, you know, judged Judge. one day. It's how we treat the least amongst us. I'm just saying, you, someone who commits a crime, we go and pat them on their back and, yeah. and buy them the best of food. That's yeah. not. That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. I think that we see a visceral response from from the public, and uh, that 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 we're doing what we're supposed to do as civilized societies, to to house criminals. And uh, but there's there's some uh, argument that criminals are getting the best of both worlds. That, yeah, you know that you know we, we've given them a three square meals. Meals a day. Yeah. Yep, and a, and a yeah. Hunt. Yeah. Well, what do <laughs> what do we do? Not feed them? <laughs> you know, I I I, I think you know at that mm. to have you know prison camps and 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 where individuals are uh, treated with indignity. Now, I do believe that um, they need to make their own way. I've, I've always um, been of the mindset that uh, they need to raise their own food. Um, they need to uh, uh, participate in rehabilitation. Um, and I also believe that, uh, you know, they should uh, wash their own clothes. But in some, some penal institutions, some penal facilities uh, do these things for them. But that's just my opinion. Uh, but. Um, they need to at least earn their way while they're, while they're incarcerated. But to, to mistreat them, um, I think that's, that's something that I, I don't think as, as a human being I could, I could ever Do, ever Dr. Powell, in, in your opinion, do you believe um, harsh um, sentences or punishments like hanging um, in, in our society, our local society, there are lots of, well, not lots, but you, you have individuals um, calling for the gallows and, and the return of hanging, especially from, from the, 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 the elder citizenry. Mm -hmm. They believe within their mindset, and I guess because of what they have experienced back in, the, in, in, the, in their time, that hanging can deter or reduce criminal activity in a country. Do you, believe, do you share that opinion? I, 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 I don't think anyone could actually argue that capital punishment in any form, shape, form, or fashion is, mm -hmm. wouldn't be a deterrence. I'll tell you why in most, in most um, um, first world countries why capital punishment has been kind of wiped off of the books is because disproportionately men and women, brown and black people were the ones who were actually going mm. to to electric chairs and, um, and firing squads and, and, and the likes. But that's something that, as a country, the populace has to, has to decide. To come together, form interest groups, and lobby your, lobby your legislatures, uh, I, I, I would say that 
while it is a deterrence, I would hate to see us have to go backwards. To go backwards. Why, why, we, we've moved forward. Why go backwards? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd rather see us try putting more, more funding into early education, character education, to change the mindset of young people. Now, there's a bunch of people in their middle, in young adulthood, um, middle adulthood, who are lost, and you'll never get them back, who are just mentally, who are just honestly mentally sick. But there are lots of young people. If we catch them, and if we are willing to wait 10 years, a decade, you'll see a much different, a much different country, a much different society, if we only invest and our young people at the early age. I guarantee you. Thank you, Dr. Powell. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll open up the lines. Get, hopefully, we could get some questions from you. Also, you on our WhatsApp texting platform, as I continue the, this amazing interview with Dr. Edwin Powell. Stay tuned. Your vehicle insurance should never break your bank. With Beacon, you can get up to 35% off your fully comprehensive car insurance and still get full protection from unexpected damages with free loss of use, windscreen cover, and special perils. When it comes to your insurance, always be sure you settle for more. Call us at 458-5860 or log on to beacon.co.tt and get a quote today. Wasco wishes to inform consumers in the north of the island that they will experience a service interruption on Wednesday, March 23rd due to scheduled work on the raw water line. As a result, consumers from Millet to Capes State will be affected. Upon completion, all efforts will be made to have the service restored within 24 hours. However, consumers at higher elevations and those at the end of the system will experience some delays. Wasco encourages consumers to make the necessary storage preparation. Wasco regrets any inconvenience caused and we thank you for your patience. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us that we should take no chances, adhere to all protocols, and trust science. And here's a scientific breakthrough you can trust. Cover Safe Antimicrobial Protection. It's an adhesive film that gives you 99.9% .9 surface protection against viruses and bacteria. There is no need to constantly wipe down surfaces. Cover Safe's built-in technology eliminates 99.9% .9 of all viruses and bacteria on surfaces, including the SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. Yes, it is 99.9% .9 guaranteed. CoverSafe is tested and proven to ISO standards, and its breakthrough technology is FDA compliant. With easy installation, CoverSafe disinfects 24 hours a day. There is no need to constantly sanitize desks, countertops, or even door handles and railings, and it is safe to humans and the environment. Save money. Let Cover CoverSafe protect your customers and employees against deadly viruses and bacteria. Call Cover Caribbean today at 584-SAFE. That's 584-7233. Let us answer your questions and arrange a consultation. The Royal St. Lucia Police and Allied Services Credit Union Limited continues to innovate and remains focused on member satisfaction in this COVID-19 era. For these reasons, we stand proud to give our members an unprecedented opportunity to own a piece of St. Lucia and to create a secured future through our investment services. Now available at the Police Credit Union, 100% financing on residential land loans. Additionally, we offer a unique investment opportunity in our fixed deposit investment plan. Earn as much as 5% annually on your investment. And if you are looking for a golden opportunity for a supplemental savings plan for retirement or any other reason, you can now enroll in our Golden Harvest Investment Plan. The Royal St. Lucia Police and Allied Services Credit Union has remained committed to serving you in this COVID period and will continue to serve you in good times and in bad times.
Welcome back to Police Insight. Your host here is Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte. In studio with me, Dr. Edwin Powell, human rights and national security expert. We're going to open up the lines. Right, Evan? 456-0306. 456-0306. Um, also, you could send me messages on my WhatsApp texting platform. 7200401. 7200401. And also, you could also put some comments on the Facebook chat as I continue the interview with my guest. So let's get some reactions from the Facebook platform. Someone here is saying, we need a prime minister like Rod Rodrigo Dertet, I believe. I Duarte. Du Duarte. Is that right, doctor? Mm -hmm. Duarte? Yeah, down with human rights. Um, there is a war on the streets. And, and Rodrigo Duarte is the, the president of the Philippines. So you guys could, if you have never heard of him, you could Google him and find out what, what he is about. Someone else there is saying, we have to examine and address the push and pull of factors that causes one to develop the propensity and motive to commit crimes and how we decrease the opportunity for them to do so. Also, what adjustments we can make as a society to deal with the problems in the holistic approach in terms of social stratification and avenues for allowing upward mobility for the underprivileged, strengthening the influence of religious, cultural institutions, and mentorships for youths. That's, that's, that's a mouthful. Yeah, and and I, and I, I, the, the, you, yep the the you whole care? the whole piece of, of stratif uh, stratification mm -hmm. in in actually bringing uh, expanding the middle class and expanding the middle class has much to do with home ownership, being able to uh, of having individuals uh, gain home ownership, developing uh, uh, you know um, wealth in their homes so that they can borrow against. Uh, the, the wealth that they've actually put into the home. That in and of itself, home ownership has expanded the middle class across the globe. Uh, so so that's, that's one way. And just, mm. to, just to respond to the comment that was made by Duarte, yeah, having Duarte, Duarte uh, uh, I, I beg to differ that anyone would, would want Duarte uh, as their prime minister <laughs> because um, Mr. Duarte uh, has, has, has pulled um, innocent has been accused of pu pulling innocent people out of the beds at night um, and, and, and committing not only uh, um, false imprisonment and, and all, all other types of, of violations of human rights. So he, he doesn't discriminate only against uh, cr um, criminals, but people who he, who he thinks within his government uh, is, is plotting against them. So, I, mm. I, so human rights is something I think uh, we, we need to um, respect. And I want to reiterate this, um, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. This human rights is not about um, uh, patting people on the, on the back. It's 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 just having a, a rule of law, a rule of law, something that we have to uh, use as a, a, a ruling guide as for our compass as we navigate um, throughout life. And, and and not to have that uh, would place us in 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 an uncivilized um, type of way. Now, uh, yes, we do need to get. Uh, tighter with our, our, our crime. I think that um, I, I heard that the prime minister, your prime minister uh, here is now looking at um, formulating some legislation mm -hmm. that will um, uh, make uh, the possession of handguns as well as ammunition, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trying to create a deterrence in that area. And, but, uh, but I'd hope that once this, 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 this legislation, this talk about legislation begin, that, it, that individuals from the community can, can play a role in this as well because public laws are forms of social policy and public policy that requires not only police officers and, and elected officials and, 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 and defense attorneys and so forth and so on, but everyone needs to play a role in this so that you can come up with a sealed, a very tight piece of legislation that will not allow criminals to get away um, or, or, or use um, loopholes to escape, uh, escape justice. Excellent. Let me get a, a comment on the WhatsApp texting platform. Um, I need to hear human rights practitioners speak as loudly on the social contract where the criminals or perpetrators should observe where potential victims are concerned. Perhaps then we might have potential criminals think before acting. Yeah. Just now, before you um, react, Dr. Powell, we have a call on the line. 
Good night, caller. Yeah, Political contribution. Yes, caller, go ahead. Yes, I was just um, um, curious as, as to whether the expert has any ideas on how to make our borders less porous. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, caller. Uh, caller, that's, that's it. whenever you have uh, a contiguous uh, water that actually surrounds the island, uh, it, it makes it that much more difficult to actually uh, police. As a, a, a member, I've, I've been working with uh, CARICOM uh, nations, several CARICOM nations, um, alongside the uh, Caribbean, Caribbean Federation of Police Welfare Associations. And B the Bahamas, for example, uh, has a bunch of island chains and so forth and so on. So everyone, most island nations are actually suffering um, from having um, their borders uh, kind of uh, uh, infiltrated by, by, by illegal um, immigration and, and the likes. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, technology, we've seen technology uh, work, especially on southern borders in the United States, uh, cameras, drones, uh, um, not to mention uh, marine, uh, in increasing the marine vessels uh, in and around the island. I think all of those things can actually contribute to uh, uh, stopping um, the influx of not only uh, guns, um, illegal um, immigration, but also uh, drugs as well. So technology, I think, in and of itself, is something that we can use in that in that realm. Okay, we have another call on the line. Let's take that call. Did we? Okay, sorry, caller. Please try again. Um, you care to yeah. respond to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in, in the, the, the individual speaking about. Okay, let, let's take that call again. Good night, caller. Hi, caller. Good night. Caller, if you're there, don't listen to your device. Just listen to the earpiece. Are you there, caller? Yes, good night. Good night. Yes, caller. Talk to me. Yes, good night. Um, you see, I want to... Don't, yes, don't, yeah, caller, don't listen to your, your television or whatever you listen to. Just talk to us. Okay, so, so what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is sometimes you find even the police office... If, no, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not listening to it. I'm just learning it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was saying sometimes you find even the police officers themselves create issues where um, somebody was been to prison and then they come out of prison and then a particular enough officer might probably see them working at a particular institution. And, you know, they, they would go back and say, you know, do you know who this guy was and do you know what he did? Mm. And then, you know, all, all of these things are things that cause people to to go back into into things that they're trying to change, and then you know, so sometimes we 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 we, don't, we blame we blame even these very same people, and we said we say you know these people are not behaving themselves and they're not catching up. But you see, they have tried, and when you, when the system has failed you, it's almost impossible to to to, to do anything. You you almost like at a point where you want to commit suicide. Yeah, but you know, you know, caller, you 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 speak of police officers who would do that, and you correct. But even a bigger picture, would you agree that society has an issue with 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 accepting the 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 ex convict? Yeah, yeah, I, as I, a I whole? agree with you. I mm -hmm. quite agree with you. But but even 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 with society itself, mm -hmm. when when a when a police officer comes to you and say, you know, this 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 guy was this and this guy was that, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, it gives you the boost that you 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 really need to get rid of him because I see. It's, it's almost like the police officer is giving you a warning. I see. You know, yeah. so you know, and, and, and the other yeah, thing I want to say that. about um, um, Sergeant Zachary, mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes, sometimes the um, you go for an investigation, and somebody comes to make a report, and then the police officer is taking the report, but you know, he said, you know, um, that's the MO of Zachary, you know, mm -hmm. well, and the right away he is putting the head of the person making the report, you know, that that's Zachary, and mm -hmm. then you know. So, so he's not. The, all of these things are unprofessional. These are yeah. these are things, you know. It, it, it really prejudices. Sometimes it may not be the person. Sometimes it may be the person. Mm -hmm. But that's for the police. And then they sit and then they they speak with the person who's doing the investigation and tell them, do you know this person and do you know that person? And you know, they, we we have to be a bit more professional. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the public is, in, in itself has to respect the police because they're there to protect every one of us. But I mean, police is human, but I'm just saying we have a few shortcomings in the police force itself. Thank you so much, Carla.
Yeah, thank you very much, my brother. No problem, brother. Have a good night. Yeah. Any reaction, Doctor Powell? And I agree. I mean. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we. I, I serve. Yeah. I serve a God of second chances. Mm -hmm. You know, but for but for Christ and His sacrifice on on Calvary's hill for a wretch like me, uh, where would I be? So um, if if we can't uh, give people second chances, the purpose of of rehabilitation is to that second chance act is to give people the opportunity to come out to be rehabilitated. And if they're out there um, trying to make an a, a honest living after being incarcerated, I think the public uh, should at least allow them to. Excellent. I'd like to say good night to Rudolph Timet and Eugenia Timet. Good night to you. Sandra Joseph saying good night. Dr. Edwin Powell. Diane Silly is saying good night. Um, maybe we could finally get back to that text, I believe, um, Doctor, you wanted to yes. react to. Yes. And let me just read really quickly again. I need to hear human rights practitioners speak as loudly on the social contract where the criminals or per perpetrators should observe where potential victims are concerned. Perhaps then we might have potential criminals think before acting. Yeah. And, okay, to yeah, and, and I think, I, think mm -hmm. I, I, I made mention of this um, when I first, first started talking is that the social contract is between individuals in, in, the, in the government, those who are actually being governed and the, and the government who, who's actually governing. But when, you, when the contract is broken, there's, 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 there's an entity who has breached the contract, and criminals have breached the contract. I'm not petting them on the back. I think that, in fact, uh, they have uh, uh, most, most in the individuals who have breached the contract shouldn't, should no longer be a part of the contract. Mm -hmm. You see you, that mm -hmm. you've severed it. And, and I think that, that having laws and having um, systems in place, juvenile justice reform, uh, justice reform for adults, that allows the government um, to, to punish individuals who actually breaks or breach that contract. Um, but to, to, to say that once they breach the contract, that all of us become uncivilized like they are. If, we, if, if, if everybody decided to go out and, 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 and do just what criminals are doing, then where, where would we be? Where would we be? What's, what type of society would we live in? There has to be um, the, the, the governed, and there has to be people, I think, in place who are actually credible and, and, and responsible enough to govern. Um, Doc, you've mentioned once before, well, also tonight, that um, poverty sometimes drive um, these trends, those crime trends. Um, can you care to elaborate? Some persons are still trying to say really and truly, does poverty really do that? Yeah, it, 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 it does. Um, there, there, there are pockets. There's, there's, there's pockets within our society uh, where if you go into any um, major city, and that's across the world, wherever you have the lack of resources, you have poor performance schools, you have um, increased um, um, crime in, in, those, in, in those particular areas. Wherever you go into an impoverished area, you're going to have the worst health care system. There's going to be disparities. Wherever there's poverty, there's disparities. There's not an equal distribution of resources. And so as a result of that, we see poor outcomes. And when it comes to crime, we see more crime being perpetrated in poor neighborhoods than we do and in, 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 I'm talking about violent crimes being perpetrated. And this, this is not something that I'm saying. This is the, the statistics that, are, that you see across the board. And, and so um, it's unfortunate, um, but, but it's a fact. That, that, uh, and, and whose fault is it? Mm -hmm. It's not the individuals who are actually living in poverty. You know, it, when, when you go into the most affluent areas, I don't care what city it is, you don't hear gunshots in the middle of the night. You don't hear... Um, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. people screaming, screaming and uh, so forth. Yeah. Come on, I'm just being real here. Yeah. I, you have to be real about it. And, yeah. and, and not that I'm saying, oh, oh he's, I don't, I don't want you to get the impression that I'm saying, oh, oh poverty and poor people are, are, are somehow um, responsible for this. I'm not saying that. I'm, this, this, is, this is something, uh, uh, something I'm placing on the backs of elected officials because uh, with uh, the amount of money, especially, you look at the per capita, mm -hmm. um, the expenditures per capita, how much we spend on a student versus how much we spend on, on, on incarcerating a prison, prisoner. 
it's 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 crazy. I see. It's crazy. So if we if we start and I'll go back to this, if we start spending money on on on, on individuals, especially our young people, investing in their education um, at a very um, early age, improving schools, improving technology in schools, making them um, being able to compete in the world market, in the global market increasing math and science technology in our schools so that they can become, um, you know, competitors, not only in the region, but in the hemisphere. These are the things that we need to do. And, and, and I guarantee you, in, in a decade or two, we'll see crime starting to tick down. We'll see an older generation who's going to actually, um, you know, kind of matriculate through, so to speak. And I hate to use the word matriculate like mm -hmm. they're in college, <laughs> but matriculate through through, through, through criminal, criminal activities, but you're going to see younger people coming behind them and making a difference. Excellent. Um, okay, we have a call on the line. Let's take that call. Good night, caller. Yeah, good night. Good night, sir. Talk to me. Good night, Sergeant, and good night to Dr. Day. Good night. I, I want to just think out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the human rights um, lawyers or, or human rights um, people um, I, I think they, they, do, they, they do right. Although in St. Lucia, I have a problem with our the defense. But, um, I, she, she echoes her voice louder when um, the criminals are handled or mishandled or, 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 or accidentally handled by the police. Mm -hmm. But I want to go a little further. I want to think out of the box. You, the lawyers are the, are the ones who actually get the, the, the criminals, especially the gun guys. I'm not talking about other crimes, but especially the gun problems that we have in Ireland. Could it, could it not be an experiment or a, 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 a service commission where the lawyers do not come out to bail, take an amnesty, do not, take out to, do not come out to bail, and also do not represent and allow those guys <laughs> oh to go? To go ahead. I'm being, I'm being very, very harsh there yeah? no. because oh. we need to put an end to this thing. And I'm only making that suggestion that lawyers mm. to help us and save, save us because I think when those guys do not get representation, they get the full brunt of the law. And I want also want hope that um, when um, our, our laws are changed, that gun related charges are he handled heavy handedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do not want to, 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 to I, we should not allow our judges and our magistrates to give those guys those 15 years and, and, and short stem, stem sentences. Mm -hmm. But uh, my suggestion is one that is deep within me. I am just thinking wow. out of the box for a solution for the problem. The wow. show has been a very good show. Have yes, a good night. Thank you, Carla. Ah, lawyers should not be giving their services for some time. <laughs> That's what he's actually saying, Doc. You have reaction? The lawyer shouldn't. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying that he believed that for some time. Because he believed the lawyers are also the problems, those who come to defend the criminals. Yeah, yeah that's a very bold statement to make, I must say. Yeah, and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, that's, that's extreme mm -hmm. uh, because I think that individuals should uh, be able to be represented. Yes. You know, um, if, 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 if the, the government has produced enough evidence... Um, to, to try individual, I think that it's their human rights to have uh, representation, you know, and uh, so um, we have the government representing the victim, representing the state, and I think it's, it's proper to have, uh, you know, individuals to have representation as well. Excellent. We have a call on the line, David, no? Okay, let's take that call. Good night, caller. Hello. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? Hello, good night, Sergeant Zachary and um, Dr. Powell. Dr. Powell. Yes. Good night. Um, from time to time, I usually tune on to the program, but somehow I'm very happy I was able to get part of it tonight, and I'm very happy that Dr. Powell is now um, able to. I must applaud him for clarifying the role of human rights um, activists and lawyers in the society. Hi, Miss Francis. Yes good, yes, good night. Good night. And reinforcing the importance that human rights activists play in a democratic society. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would like to say. Mm -hmm. I recall having met him a couple of years ago, and I was quite um, pleased that he was trying to educate the police on human rights. Mm -hmm. 
because um, human rights law is actually the um, the law which governs the relationship between the state and the citizen, and it's quite right. So I think um, reinforcing the importance of human rights act activists or lawyers um, is very, very, uh, um, I must applaud it. And I hope by um, St. Lucian will be able to understand because the prophet is never accepted in his or her own country. But sometimes when somebody comes from the outside and try to um, bring across the same message, it might be more acceptable. I think in time to come, St. Lucian will understand that human rights advocacy is not about actually supporting criminal activity. Exactly. It's a question of the rule of law, as Dr. Powell has said, and I'm very pleased that he has made that point tonight to try and actually clarify the position and let St. Lucian understand a little more the mm. role of human rights in a democratic society as part of the rule of law, as part of the constitutional law of the state, that every human being has human rights. Mm -hmm. Whether you are a criminal, you still remain a human being. And our constitution makes the point. Every person in St. Lucia is guaranteed those rights. It does not say except, no exception when it comes to criminals. St. Lucians must understand that. And as Dr. Powell says, if we don't uh, abide by those rules and those norms, international norms, we will become a very uncivilized people, you know? So mm -hmm. I applaud him for making those statements tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it, Miss Francis? Yes, Miss Francis. Yes, thank you so much. Somehow I was able to tune on tonight, and oh. I think I wanted to just applaud Dr. Powell. Yes, yes. Know? Thank you so and much. And also Sergeant Zachary. Thank you, Miss Mary You're Francis. Thank you. Take care. Thank Human you. rights lawyer, Miss Mary Francis. Um, someone says here, violent music content is what that programs our youth to be violent. If you actually study what is creating these monsters, you would see that. Have you, have, have you spoke about that, Doc? Okay, I think the police is trying to say, um, what is your take on violent music? Do we have a call on the line, Tevin? Okay, what, what would you like to say in terms of music? Well, wh whoever, whoever made that statement is very learned because uh, pop culture has in some ways influenced young people, especially young, impressionable minds. Mm -hmm. The most important, we, we have some rap, some rap artists and, and I'll, I'll be the first to say that I do like rap music. Mm -hmm. But too. when you have when you have artists who actually go out and glamorize using drugs, you have rap artists who actually go out glamorize, glamorizing shooting and, and, and going into beefs and so forth and so on. I think that that is unconscionable. But I, I, I've always wondered why haven't these rap artists um, used their platform to get young people to go and register to vote? Mm -hmm. Why haven't they used their platform to actually get you? You know, they could use the same beats to get <laughs> young. Yeah, to get the young mm -hmm. people to actually um, get involved in post-secondary education, yes, clean up their neighborhood, clean up their neighborhood. Like yeah. but they won't. So yes, yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the one who actually uh, placed placed that that uh, that that uh, that, 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 that text comment. Yeah. that comment. You're, you're spot on because. They, they do, they do have a, a responsibility to play, and I think uh, rap artists in and of itself, some of them are un unconsciously um, obtuse for, for actually um, coming up with some of the, the lyrics that they do. I'd like to say good night to Josiah and Sandra. Josiah and Sandra in Laugh A. I'd like to say good night to you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And um, don't forget, people, you cannot call me on whatsapp you could only message you'll have to call the show directly okay um to call the studio um we almost winding down have about five minutes left good night gift of felicia and how are you doing thank you so much um dr powell in terms of we were speaking earlier about crime trends um how um poverty influences that what else can a government do to counter those trends from a legislative perspective well, I, I think uh, the, the, uh, the Prime Minister, especially here, is already st starting mm -hmm. to talk about how to strengthen laws. But I, I think I want to bring this point back about, um, you know, bringing people from the community to actually play a role in, in actually formulating legislation. Legislation is a piece, an extension of social and political, or social policy and political policy, so to speak. And when you have a, a defense attorneys at the table, when you have people from the community, the clergy at the table, helping to craft legislation, you have police officers at the table, you have uh, prosecutors at the table helping to legislate, I mean, to craft legislation, what you're going to get is you're going to get a very tight, a very tight-knit 
um, 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 a piece of, of, of crafted law that, that won't have any loopholes in it. Can you imagine having a defense attorney come and give you points in terms of how you should strengthen the law? Because they're giving you your secrets in terms of how yeah. they defend the criminals. Yeah. So, so I would beg the, the legislators that when you come up, when you start legislating, don't legislate in a, in a vacuum. Make this, get public buy-in. Allow the public, allow a social policy committee to actually participate uh, in, in crafting the legislation. Um, last question for you, Doc, before you give your closing statements, because we're running out of time. As you know, the impacts and lay sanctions really placed a damper on um, policing in St. Lucia. How do we move beyond that in terms of starting effective policing again, given that those impacts? Police, police have to police. You know, Operation Restore Confidence has really placed a blemish on the, the, the uh, Royal St. Lucia Police Force. As a result of that, I came down in 2015, as, you, as the government can attest to, provided um, substantial training in and around human rights. And as a result of that, last year, some of the Leahy sanctions were actually lifted as a result of the work that we did together. Police still have to police. There needs to continue to be operations because um, we cannot allow um, one um, uh, incident or, or multiple mm -hmm. incidents or situation you know, stop police from doing what we do. We have to ensure that the public is, is, is safe. We have to ensure that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that the, the country is, 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 is attractive to, to visitors. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have to get criminals off the street. And, 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 and so, you know, we have to send a message out to, to those who are acti actually engaged in criminal activity that th your day is coming. Yeah. Your day is coming, and, uh, and, and it, it's going to be uh, proportionate. It's going to be within the bounds of law, um, but it will happen. Final comments by you, Dr. Powell. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, just reach out to Officer King, uh, uh, who was injured uh, in, in this, this last uh, incident uh, where he, him and uh, Officer uh, Timit was, mm -hmm. uh, was, were, were, were ambushed. My condolences out to his family, uh, uh, to, to the uh, to Mint family, and, uh, and to St. Lucia. Uh, we can do better. As, as We're part of the diaspora, and uh, as people, as black and brown people, we have to set an example um, that we can, we can self-govern and that we're not um, you know, malicious people. Uh, grab, a, grab a person, in, if, if you can, and, and take them to church with, them, with you. Uh, reach out and teach one. Um, see individuals on the streets uh, to the extent possible. Reach out and, and, and support individuals uh, when you can. I think we can do better. I know we will do better. And I think in the, in the next coming days, um, weeks, and months, you'll see a new, uh, new St. Lucia. I, 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 I have confidence in it. And I believe in that, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Powell, for being my guest tonight on Police Insight. Thank you, sir. And those of you who um, contributed in any way on the Facebook um, streaming platform, on the texting platform, and you called the studio, thank you so much for your support. As you know, every Tuesday we do this show, and we will not be able to do it alone. We need your help and your support. Thank you for supporting the police force and all things good in St. Lucia. Until next Tuesday, stay safe and good night. Dis-moi ça qui a affecté vous. Dis-moi problème pays. Dis-moi solution. Parce que moi, ça vous savez. Dis-moi qui manière nous savons mener cette liste devant pour faire un bon place pour l'autre génération. Dis-moi ça qui a soutenu. Dis-moi tous les samedis soirs à 6h30.